Howdy, we're going to be going over strings, I'm going to try to make it pretty quick, hopefully I can fit it into one video. Strings are objects that store and manipulate text. The text in a string is stored in a char array. Note, strings are immutable. Immutable objects cannot be changed, like strings. This was actually copied and pasted from the next chapter, so in the next chapter it says wrap, wrappers are immutable. Um, like strings, but I guess strings are immutable like strings as well. The format for creating a string. String variable name equals new string text. Example, string student name equals new string parenthesis Billy uh, parenthesis and notice Billy's in quotes. <coughs> You've probably never created a string this way. Internally, that's how strings are created. Usually we use the shortcut. The shortcut format is string variable name equals quote text quote. Example, student, sorry, string student name equals Billy. That's the way we do it. But what's really happening behind the scenes is it says string student name equals and then it puts in new string Billy for you. Why you think strings can change. Strings can't change, but you probably have the belief that they can. So here, I'm going to grab the pen, and let's say we say string s equals 1, 3, 5. That's some memory address. So somewhere, 1, 3, 5, we're going to make a new object, and we're going to store the text Bob. So we've created a string and stored Bob in that string. S is a variable that can contain a string, but a string's an object, so it stores the memory address 135. At 135, we have Bob. So when we system.out.println, Bob gets printed to the screen. If we say S equals Jim, what's really happening, the short, this is shortcut for new string. We might have at 177, some memory address. We might now store Jim at 177. So then S would be changed and no longer store 135. S would store 177. The container that can hold a string now contains a new object. It's pointing to a new memory location. So S is Jim. But notice Bob did not get changed. At location 135, we still have Bob. So S is a container that references a string. The first time it referenced the string at location 135, Bob. Now it references the string at location 177, Jim. But notice Bob wasn't changed to Jim. What 135, a memory address 135, we still have Bob. Although the garbage collector is going to go around and destroy this location because nobody has reference to it anymore. But we did not actually change Bob. What happened is we created a new string with a different memory address. <coughs> string methods, two char array, returns a character array that stores the same text as the string. We've already seen this. Uh, we've been using it in the last chapter in arrays. So string s equals turtles, and then we say char bracket bracket letters equals s dot two char array, and letters would contain. So let's do this the long way. We're gonna have a new new array called letters. My handwriting's beautiful with the mouse. Um, it's gonna store turtles. And at location 0, it has T, 1, U, 2, R, 3, T, 4, L, 5 has an E, and 6 has an S. So if we system out.print letter 2, that would be the R. So the output for this would be R. <coughs> length returns the number of characters in the string. So length parenthesis parenthesis. Example, string s equals apples. If we do system.out.print s.length, we get 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different letters. So the output is 6. Some of you might be thinking, well, the last letter is at spot 5. The length is 5. No, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 6 different values. It's asking how many letters are there, not where the last one is located. Char at char at receives int x, returns the character at the given index. Error if the index is out of bounds. 
So here we do char at 2. So we start numbering. String s equals Bob likes cheese. 0, 1, 2. And then we have at spot 3, we have a space. But well, we've already gotten to the location we needed, which was 2. And at location 2, we have a b. So here this is going to print b. 2 uppercase. 2 uppercase returns a new string that is an all uppercase version of the calling string. So we have turtles, spelled kind of weird, different capitalization than we're used to. So if we do s.2 uppercase, this would print turtles in all uppercase, because what is being returned from the method is the uppercase version of our string. So, oh, I was about to skip directly to the e. Turtles would be our first line print. Then we move to the next line. Then we print s. Strings are immutable, so when we do things like two uppercase, we're getting a new string that has the text turtles in all caps. s was not changed. So s is still t u capital R capital T E S. So the output of this program is turtles in all caps and then turtles how it was written originally. <coughs> Our next method is two lowercase. Returns a new string that is an all lowercase version of the string. So again we're going to have turtles. So our first output s.2 lowercase returns a lowercase version of turtles. So T U R T L E S in all lowercase. But then if we go print S again, it is still exactly as we wrote it, because that method didn't change S. All it did was return an uppercase version of turtles. And this would be our output. <coughs> The next method we're going to look at is equals. We've already used this one before, too. You send it a string. It returns true if the string you sent is exactly the same as the string that's calling the method. Notice it's case sensitive. So we have s, which is apples, t, which is apples with an uppercase a, and u, which is lowercase apples. So if we system.out.print s compared to t, well, s is apples. T is apples with a capital letter. Those are different because this is case sensitive. So our first output would be false. Then if we do s dot equals u, does the text of s equal the text of u? Yes. So we get true. equals ignore case, we send it another string, returns true if the received string and the calling string are the same and false otherwise. Notice we have a note, equals ignore case treats uppercase and lowercase versions of a letter as equal. So this time if we do s dot equals ignore case t, we compare apples to apples, but we ignore any differences in case, so these are the same. And if we compare lowercase apples to lowercase apples, we get true. So we get true, true in this example. String methods compare to. Compare to, you send it a string, it returns an int value that describes how far apart the first letter that is different between the calling string and the received string is. That seems a little confusing. <coughs> When we get examples, when we get to the examples, it'll make a little bit more sense. Positive. The received string is first alphabetically. So that means the one on the right side. So if the one, if the met, if the string that you sent to the method is first alphabetically, you get a positive number. If the two strings are exactly the same, you get zero. If you get a negative number, the first string or the calling string is first alphabetically. Let's look at an example. So we have apples, we have apples, we have apples, and we have bear. So s <coughs> dot compared to t. We have apples and apples. We find the first difference is at the first letter. And we have, let's see, capital A is 65, 
and we have lowercase a is 97. These are 32 apart, but which one came first alphabetically? S, the lowercase letter, or T, the uppercase letter? The uppercase letter comes first alphabetically because it is lower in ASCII. So you get a positive 32 because the one on the right comes first alphabetically. T dot compare to S. Now we've reversed it. The one on the left, or the calling string, comes first alphabetically. The difference apart between the letters is 32. You get a negative 32, letting you know that the calling string came first alphabetically. If we do S dot compare to U, S and U are exactly the same text, we get 0. If we get S dot compare to V, V is bare, the letter B comes one after A. So A is first. So S dot compare to V, the S variable has a lower alphabetical word because of the lowercase a to a lowercase b. So we get a negative number and they're one apart. A, B. <coughs> contains. Contains returns true when the received value, well sorry, returns true when the received string exists in the calling string and false otherwise. So if we have A is Jojo, we say does A contain B, Joe, J-O-E. No, there is no J-O-E in that sentence, sorry, in that word. So we get a big false. We have A contains C. Does Jojo contain J-O-J? -J? Yes. So we get true. All right, now we're doing starts with. Starts with returns true if the calling string starts with the received string. So we have A dot starts with B. Does Jojo start with Joe? At the beginning, do we find Joe? Yes, we do. So we get true. Does A start with C? So does Jojo start with OJ? No, it starts with J-O. O-J is found in it, it contains it, but it doesn't start with it, so we get false. Two and a half minutes left. Ends with, ends with returns true when the received string is at the end of the calling string and false otherwise. So we got Jojo, does it end with Joe? Oh, sorry, we have A dot ends with B, I got ahead of myself. Does Jojo end with Joe? Yes. So we get true. Does it end, does A end with C? Does Jojo end with J-O-J? -J? No, it doesn't. It ends with O-J-O. -O, so this would be false. All right, we're going to do index of. Index of char c returns the first index of the received char, negative one if not found. So we have apples. If we do s dot index of x, there is no x in there, so we get minus one. s dot index of p, the first p that we find is at location zero, one. So the first p is at location one, so this would return one. Index of two, you send me a character and where you want to start looking from. Returns the first index of the received letter, starting from the given index. Minus one if not found. So we got Bob. S dot index of B, starting at the beginning, we find B at zero. S dot index of B, starting at location one. So we start at one, is that a B? No. Is two a B? Yes. So if we start at location one, we find a B at position two. Looks like I'm out of time. We'll do, we'll do a smaller cleanup video, and I'll be back in a minute.